Hi everybody, my name is Chris and welcome to Macduff Aquarium's Squid Dissection. I thought you'd be quite fascinated to see um, what these animals look like inside. Uh, they're kind of fascinating animals and seeing as we use them every day at the aquarium, I thought it'd be kind of interesting just to give you a brief run through as to um, what they look like inside and how we use them as food source. So this is a um, Argentinian short fin squid, um, commonly found in Brazil and Argentina. You can see immediately it's fairly sizable. They're about a foot long, a very fast growing species, and they have huge eyes. The eyes um, of squid and generally amongst the cephalopod family are some of the largest eyes in comparison to the size of the body of any animals on the planet. These guys live down to 800 meters deep. Where else it's dark and they need as much light getting to them as possible. So that's why they've got huge eyes. You can see that they've got two longer tentacles that normally stay inside and they're the ones that they shoot out and they can shoot out at quite a rate to grab hold of uh, fish and other small small animals that they're trying to get hold of and then they would grab hold of that animal with their um, other arms um, and hold them with the suckers. Now I'm just here extracting um, out of one of the suckers uh, this little line of teeth. It's got a little ring of very hard teeth-like structures that actually hold the hold the prey item in place, um, allowing the squids to eat it. Um, so down each length of each arm, there's approximately 30 to 40 separate suckers, each with a line of these, or a ring of these teeth. <clears throat> Inside the, the squid, where its mouth parts are, uh, you can see a highly muscular um, section of mouth. And in these guys, they have a beak that's almost the same as a parrot, um, a very, very sharp beak. Um, I mean, you can cut yourself on these things really easily. Um, I'll just pull this one out and you can see how muscular it is, all the muscle alongside it. And then I'll try and show you actually what the beak looks like. But if you can imagine a parrot, um, that's that's exactly the same structure as these, these squid have got. So you can imagine that if you're a crab or if you're a small fish, which is what these, these guys would normally eat, if you got bitten by one of these, you'd really know about it. Uh, I've heard plenty of reports from fellow fellow acrists who have um, been bitten by squid and other cephalopods and it can be pretty sore so any of your cephalopods cuttlefish octopuses things like that would potentially have quite a quite a nip to it these guys aren't poisonous but um, some cephalopods certainly are the mantle here um, is a, a quite a large muscular um, cavity basically that holds the and squid body in place and as you can see there they've got what's called a siphon so normally they would inject water or the water would go into the mantle and then come out of that siphon very similar to a jet ski and that's how they propel themselves through the water so they pump water into their mantle and then pump it out through the siphon and that siphon is again hugely muscular and allows them to direct their their um, direction of travel through the water and allows them to go up and down left and right so as I open this one up um, you can see it's quite muscular. Uh, they're an exceptionally good food source for our, our fish uh, here in the aquarium. We do get squid of all different sizes. Inside, uh, I'll point out a couple of things as we go along. They're starting towards the front. Um, they start off with their digestive area. And then the section at the back is gonads. Um, in this case, is a male squid. Uh, these are testes. And then down either side of the um, body, just there where I'm pointing out, uh, that's the gills. And just like any aquatic animal or any aquatic fish or aquatic invertebrate, these guys have gills. So if I peel this one up now, um, you can see that the mantle basically is a is a wraparound muscular structure that holds the holds the um, body parts in place. This section that I'm removing here is one of the most fascinating bits of squid anatomy. This is what's called a squid pen, and it's uh, it's fairly rigid. It feels very much like plastic. Uh, I, I quite often kid with folks when I'm showing them this that they they're eating all the plastic in the ocean, and that's why that's why their squid pen feels like plastic. Squid are in fact invertebrates, uh, the same as octopuses and um, worms and slugs and snails and things like that. So they don't have a backbone, but they do, however, have this squid pen that allows them to remain fairly rigid. The other side of the, the 
the squid's mantle is the, the outside skin, and this contains lots of what's called chromatophores. And if you've ever seen displays of cuttlefish um, displaying to each other, you'll see that they can amazingly change colour. And they've got quite a, quite a range of colour changing that they can do in order to communicate and ward off predators and such like. Squid less so, um, but certainly such squid do use chromatophores in order to communicate. So what I'm doing now is I'm just peeling that, um, that outside skin off in order to prep this food in order for our animals to be able to eat it. Uh, there's not a lot of nutrition in the skin, so we tend to peel it off. And that leaves us just this white section of mantle. If you've ever had calamari, that's exactly what you're eating when you have calamari. It's just that in this situation, I've opened him up. So it's lying in a flat sheet. When you have calamari, traditionally, they are circular rings. We chop ours up into little pieces, as I'm doing here. And this just makes it much easier for the smaller fish to be able to take their take their bits um, without without having to chew it too much or without having to um, have it stuck or spit it out or reject it. So we tend to chop it up based on the size of the fish that we're, we're feeding. The mantle itself is um, full of protein, very little fat, so it's actually very good for our fish. We tend to use it a lot during the summer and use squid a lot more in the summer when the fish don't need fattening up for winter. Uh, during the winter time, we tend to feed them slightly more oily fish. So what I also do is chop up all the tentacles. The tentacles are really good um, source of nutrition because, again, they're just pure muscle. Uh, there's very little fat to them. So we chop those up. And again, you can chop those up as small as you need them, depending on the size of the fish that you're, you're feeding. The head itself hasn't really necessarily got a lot of, a lot of nutritional value to it. But certainly our lobsters, our crabs, things like that, actually quite enjoy eating the squid heads. So thank you very much. That's um, a brief introduction to squid anatomy and the way that we prepare squid here in the aquarium.